This is an example of how we can use implicit differentiation in economics. We'll be using a simple macroeconomic model, so naturally we'll be using some macroeconomic terminology. If you haven't studied any macro yet, that's fine, just follow the maths. This is a model of the overall economy, where Y is the total income, for example measured as GDP. Total income is made up of consumption and investment. This is a simple model because we don't have a government sector, so we don't have government expenditure or taxation. And we're assuming a closed economy, so there's no imports or exports. Investment is an exogenous variable. That's indicated by the bar on top of the symbol. We usually assume investment is determined by interest rates, and interest rates don't appear in this model. That's why it's exogenous. Consumption, C, depends on income. So we have C as a function of Y. A proportion of income is spent on consumption, and the remainder is saved. That proportion of income spent on consumption is called the marginal propensity to consume, and it takes a value between 0 and 1. The marginal propensity to consume is also the first root of, of C with respect to Y, F prime Y. Now we've set up the model, we want to determine how Y, total income, changes with I, investment. In other words, we want to find dy di. We use implicit differentiation because we have C as a function of Y as a term in the equation. Our basic model is Y equals C plus I, but we also know that C is a function of Y. Let's incorporate those into one equation. Y total income is equal to consumption f of y plus i. We want to find dy di, but we have a term there that's a function of y, consumption. Let's deal with consumption first. We want to find how consumption changes as investment changes. So we're after d di of f of y. We'll use the chain rule. The first part of the chain rule will be, well, d, df of y, differentiated with respect to y, times dy, di. That's just equal to f prime y, our marginal propensity to consume, times dy, di. Now we've sorted our consumption, let's go back to our full equation and differentiate that. y equals f of y plus i implies that the first derivative with respect to i, dy, di, that's the left-hand side, is equal to, well, we, we found the implicit differential of the first term on the right-hand side. That's uh, f prime y, dy, di. The first root of i with respect to i is simply 1. We found our implicit differential. We have dy, di in two places, so we want that on the left-hand side. We subtract f prime y times dy di from both sides. We can collect like terms and divide through by 1 minus f prime y. So now we found how total income y changes as i changes. It's equal to 1 over 1 minus f prime y. Let's look at that further. You have dy di. We know that f prime y is between 0 and 1. That implies dy di is greater than 1. For example, if f prime y is equal to 0 0.75, dy di is equal to 1 over 1 minus 0 0.75 is equal to 1 over 0 0.25 is equal to 4. What that tells us is if investment increases by $1, then total income increases by $4. A little more on the consumption function. Sometimes we assume that the consumption function is a linear function, a plus by. In that case, f prime y is equal to b. That's equal to the marginal propensity to consume. And then dy di would be 1 over 1 minus b. That's equal to 1 over 1 minus the marginal propensity to consume. 